Good afternoon and welcome to Fort Laramie High School where today WSN begins its coverage of spring sports here across Northwest and North Central Ohio. It's baseball time as we have the Fort Laramie Redskins and they will host the Coldwater Cavaliers. My name is Mark Shine. My pleasure to do play by play. David's been a little bit of a difficult start. Could have played Saturday, could have played Sunday, could have played Monday, which uh, Fort Laramie was able to do. We've got a 4 0 win, but today we've got some nice weather today for baseball. It is absolutely beautiful out here, Mark. Uh, great to be your wingman. And yeah. let's, as you said, let's play some baseball, high school baseball, spring sports. Turn the page from the winter, get that sun out here, get it warmed up. Let's get after it. Fort Army won a, a Shelby County Athletic League game yesterday, defeated Anna 4-0 to 1-0 on the season. Coldwater was scheduled to play Ben Logan. That game has been postponed till later on because of the weather and grounds conditions. So Coldwater will have an uh, opening lineup. We'll go this way. Marcel Blassingay in the center fielder will lead off. His second hitting second, Braylon Harlemick, the second baseman hitting third, A.J. Harlemick, the catcher. Luke Sudoff, the third baseman, hits fourth. And then we'll go to Braxton Howe. Evan Harlemet, Mason Welch, Curtis Dewar, and Keegan Brunneman. Bruggeman will be the opening lineup for Coldwater. Swinging strike on the first pitch. That comes from Kristen McGee starting today. Crafty left-hander out there. And with that first pitch, our game time temperature, a balmy 48 degrees. 48 degrees. At, I got 504 on my magical phone, which we all have to carry now. And that ball is grounded to the third baseman, but it will go foul. So he whacked it past Roger Hoyne to go 0-2 on the count. Let's set the defense for the uh, Fort, Fort Laramie Redskins. Will Hoying is the catcher. We mentioned uh, Christian McGee is on the mound today. Calvin Hoying plays first. Colin Lessick is at second. Uh, Dylan Sanders plays short. Roger Hoying is at third. And around the outfield from left to right, Max Kottner, Logan Eilerman, and the right fielder is Darren Eilerman today. That pitch is high. It's one and two. As we said, Christian McGee out there for Fort Laramie. Maverick Grittich pitched last night in that win over Anna, the 4-0 shutout. Great way to start your conference, right? I was going to say, league game yeah, right league away. Game right which, of course, they do in basketball. And... Of course, Dave, I'm a fan of the fact that they play uh, round robin in as many sports as possible, volleyball, basketball, so on. Swinging strike. No, it's tapped. It got it bad enough on to put it foul. But I like the fact that they're able to play home and home in, in a conference with just seven teams. Makes for 12 games. I like it at 12 games. You know, there's some conferences you, you do um, home and home, and there's 16 league games during the winter with basketball and other sports as well, obviously baseball. You don't give yourself much room for a non-league schedule in that situation. Count goes full. I've got some solutions for 10-team leagues on how to deal with that, but uh, nobody ever listens to well, some, some of the goofy ideas that we have sometimes. We got all night. Yeah, we do. And after going up 0-2 uh, on the count, we have a walk to Marcel Blassingame. That brings up Braylon Harlemont, the second baseman. Yeah, Blassingame does a real nice job there. Exactly what you want your leadoff hitter to do. Make the pitcher go deep in the count, and then he works him for a walk, gets himself on first base. Braylon Harlemont, junior, plays second base. Bats from the left side of the plate, and that's a strike. Home plate umpire today is Scott Barr. On the bases is Dave McCartney. Blasting game, a bit of a lead here at first. And nice read there by Blasting Game. He yeah. was heading back to first base right away. Coldwater coached by Corey Klinke. Jeff Saunders is the coach here for the Redskins. Ball is hit on the line and picked off by the third baseman and throw across the diamond is late. Nice play, Roger Hoying. On the line out. Yeah, that ball was heading down towards the grass. And as you said, Roger Hoying picks it off, keeps it from touching dirt, touching grass, first out of the game. A.J. Harlemont will step in to hit. He is the catcher. He is a, just a junior, but is a returning all-conference player in the MAC at 391 a year ago. Snap throw, and that one got away from him. He's going to make a turn, and 
the uh, first baseman is scrambling to get the ball. It's a little bit outside of our range of vision. Calvin Hung was able to get it and hold him to second base, but that does put a runner in scoring position with one out. See if that changes how A.J. Harleman approaches things at the plate. In that three spot, see if he squares up here a little bit to move the runner over. If we're going to play for a big inning, RBI single might bring him around. That's a strike. Big hole on the right side of the field. Second baseman, Colin Lessig is way over trying to hold the runner on. And get to the right side, is going to play the run. And he fouls that one back. Yeah, Christian McGee, left-hander there. He's got a nice breaking ball. Gets a lot of break on that. Puts pressure on the batter to be patient and wait for it to get to him. 0-2 oh, is the count. Deep in the batter's box is Harleman. And pitch stays high. Good pitch right there, just yeah. off the corner. Set him up, 0-2. Oh, You're not going to throw anything too fat there. See if you can get the batter to chase. That breaking ball is fouled straight back. Yeah, again, I like the way Harlem stays back on that breaking ball. Making contact with it. What breeze we have today, and there is not much of it, bros from uh, across the diamond, from roughly first base towards the third base side. That pitch will stay high, significantly less than the gust we had on Saturday. Yeah, there were some oh. big wins then, and yeah. you're right, this beautiful press box up here. Uh, we're open-faced here, great view, but yep. the wind is coming from behind, so we're not getting any of it in here. That pitch is also high. So once again, after starting out 0-2, as he did with Marcel Blasting game, he now goes full. Yeah, McGee nipping at the corners here, but going deep in the count like this. Got him swinging. Does a nice job there. You're right. First strikeout of the game, and that changes the situation a bit, but brings Luke Sudoff to the plate, the third baseman. Yeah, Sudoff back in the lineup. Did not play last year because of an injury. Great to see him back in uniform, and Coldwater Cavalier fans are excited to see him have a great senior campaign. In the cleanup spot, breaking ball, stayed high. 320 down the line. 305 at down the right field line. So left field's a farther poke than it is to get it out of here going to right field. It's a strike on the inside part of the plate. Evens a count at one. Yeah, that breaker had a little more of a slider feel to it yeah. instead of that big left handed curve. Had a little heat on that one, but broke across the plate nicely for the strike, the called strike. Snap that one off. Backdoor breaking ball. He's got him set up a little bit here. I think if he could come hard in on the hands with a fastball, might be able to ring him up. One, two is the count. Two outs here in our opening inning from Fort Laramie. See where McGee goes. Late swing, ground ball to Hoing, and it goes off his glove. So Sudoff will be on. And the runner, blasting game, will move up to third base and bring up Braxton Howell. You know, Dave, that's the kind of play I think you get sometimes. That the grass is not grass grass yet. Correct. And, and you get some of those uh, rough hops because of the infield. Yep. Yep. You'll play that, though, in order to be able yep. to play out here. It's, again, a beautiful evening to get some baseball in. But the grass is not quite greened up yet. Tough play there for the third baseman, Roger Hoy. Braxton Howell, the third baseman for Coldwater, will step in. Good job by Hoyne to keep that one in front of him. Be interesting to see if uh, Coldwater puts Sudoff in motion with the second base open. See McGee shakes off the first sign from his catcher, Will Hoying. 
That one stays low and in. Set off not with a real big lead with the left-hander on the rubber, but he does get a nice secondary lead when the pitch does go towards the plate. So right now I'd say he's not going to look to steal. Fastball. He kind of cocks that ball in his hand, doesn't he, before he releases it partway through his motion. Yeah, he actually snaps it back in he his does. glove. I, I'm, I'm almost wondering, obviously, uh, it's not a balk, but it somewhat feels like it's, there it is. Yep. Ground ball, that one knocked down by the pitcher, McGee. Christian throws it to his first baseman, Calvin Hoang, and gets out of the inning. Coldwater puts a couple guys on without a hit. We'll go to the bottom of the first with no score. You're watching High School Baseball on WSN. We're back at Fort Larmy. The Redskins coming to the plate. They will hit in th this order today. The designated hitter, Maverick Grin Grinich, who pitched last night, will be the DH today. Dylan Sanders, the shortstop, will hit second. Calvin Hoying hits third and is the first baseman. Roger Hoying, the third baseman, hits fourth. Then we go to Colin Lessick, the, the second baseman. Logan Eilerman in center field. Max Kottner, the right fielder. At the bottom of the order, Darren Eilerman will, is in right field, and then Christian McGee, the pitcher, will hit ninth. Will Hoying is the player who is being hit for today by Maverick Grudich. Pitcher today, well, that will be Keegan Bruggeman. Keegan is a uh, senior. He had 11 starts a year ago for Coldwater, 6-3 and three with a 2.80 ERA. In 57.1 innings, he had 44 strikeouts, 22 walks. And, Dave, if there was a negative stat, because most of those are pretty good, he hit 12 batters a year ago. Negative stat, but yet, you know, you don't want to dig you in there to play. In, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> and if you're the mascot, you make sure you're away from behind the plate a little bit. Going back to a couple yeah. movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, six and three. Uh, um Reese Dellinger was seven and two, the MAC Player of the Year last year, but um, six and three, nice record for the Cavs uh, from Keegan Brueggemann, and they're looking for him to be their number one this year. Each team has, has a lot of returning players. There, there are eight seniors on the Coldwater roster and seven juniors. There are ten seniors that make up the Fort Laramie roster, and four juniors and a sophomore. So. Uh, each team has a lot of experience returning this year. Experience, but yet for Fort Laramie, they lost seven seniors to graduation from a regional championship team. And all of those seven seniors earned all league honors last year. So you're right. Players coming back, but yet uh, Fort Laramie especially lost a lot of firepower. Here's Grudich, the DH, to step in. Mentioned he... Had the winning pitcher last night win all seven innings in his opening start. Defeated Anna four to nothing. Coach Sanders told me that he threw a very efficient 100 pitches and had 19 strikeouts. And he just lined up the middle. So he will have a base hit up the middle. Nice piece of first oh. pitch hitting right there from Gurdich. And that was definitely a line drive up the middle and in the scorebook. It looks like a line drive up the middle. <laughs> Nicely Saunders, done. Dylan Saunders, the shortstop, steps in. See what kind of play they put on here. Yeah. See if we see a little bun action here early on. A little small ball. And takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. Defensively, it goes like this. A.J. Harleman's the catcher. Braxton Howell is at third. Evan Harleman is at shortstop. Brian, Braylon Harleman is the second baseman. Luke Sudoff plays first base. One, oh, one count, and that one also is a strike. Keegan Brueggemann is bringing nothing but heat yes, right he down is. the middle, doing a nice job. Three pitches, three strikes thus far. Left, center, and right. Justin Kaup, Marcel Blassingame, and Curtis Dewar. O2 is the count. That ball's hit up in the air. And over the head of the center fielder, Marcel Blasting game. Here's the throw back into the infield. And well, Saunders jumped on that one and got it out over the center fielder's head. I wish I'd have said this before he hit that baseball, but I was just about ready to say the outfield for Coldwater playing rather shallow. And Dylan Sanders makes them pay with the double to put runners on second and third 
with nobody out. Nobody out, that is correct. And that will bring up uh, Calvin Hoing. Is the first baseman. Blazing game a little deeper now after that drive over his head. Back about, oh, I'd say four or five steps from where he was with the previous batter, Dylan Sanders. Ball's dribbled foul. And Dylan Sanders, as far as small ball, said, uh, Mr. Bowen, here's your yeah. small ball. <laughs> yeah. I just laced one over the center. <laughs> <over his head. laughs> yeah. That nice. might that might also be indicative of, of the grass conditions because that one died once it got into the outfield grass too. That uh, you know on a warmer, drier day in in May that goes to the wall. Mm -hmm. Pitch stayed high. It's two and one. Bruggeman. And that ball is fouled back by Hoying. Count goes to 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, Calvin Hoying not getting cheated in there, getting his cuts. Brueggemann bringing the heat. Yeah, got him swinging. Nice pitch. At the knees. Big out there right there. One out in the inning. Roger Hoying steps in to hit. The first baseman, Luke Sudoff, is on the grass. Everybody else playing a pretty much normal position defensively. They would concede a run to get it out here. Hoying, the third baseman, will hit. The pitch is high. See if Brookerman can work him work his way out of this first inning jam. Bunts it up in the air. And they get him at the plate. They got him. Nicely done. Your third baseman, Braxton Howe, comes in hard, charges to that. The runner had to hesitate just a second, Mark, because that bunt was in the air. And then once he realized it was going to go down, but that hesitation. That created the situation where they were able to throw him out at the plate. Didn't know for sure if it was going to work because Howe threw the ball. He didn't throw it overhand. He just dished it to the catcher, A.J. Harlemer. But they get the out. Big time play for Coldwater here in the bottom of the first to keep a runner from scoring. And then a really nice piece of umpiring by Scott Barr. Stepped up, looked to make sure he maintained possession of the baseball after the tag. So now we have two outs. That pitch is high. And... The, the catcher, Harlem, is able to snag that one. That could have headed to the screen. So, as you said, two outs in the inning. If Bruckerman can work his way out of this jam, you've got to be real happy. Let's see what Lessig does with this one. Swings right through that one. Not getting cheated up there are the Fort Laramie Redskins there. Making some great cuts at the baseball. One and one with two outs. Keegan Bruggeman trying to get out of a early jam here in this one. That one's fisted back towards the screen and will make the count one and two. In the old wood bat days, that has snapped the, yeah, snapped the handle absolutely, right off. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I had an out K line 29. Wow. Mm hmm. And then it was aluminum bats from there from on there out. From there on out. Yeah. That was first year Little League, 10 years old. Just a few years ago. A couple days. Got him swinging. He got out of the inning. Did Keegan Bruggeman. After a couple of early hits, strikeout, fielder's choice strikeout, could play at the plate. And we will go to the top of the second scoreless. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN.
Back at Fort Army, inning two coming up. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Smyre and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Shine and Dave Bowen, we go scoreless to the top of the second, and the Coldwater Cavaliers will bring in Evan Harlemet, Mason Welch, Curtis Dewar to face Christian McGee. Pitch is high. Evens account one and one. Nice comeback pitch. Good friend of all of us at WSN, Corey Britton has moved on from his basketball coaching position after nine years. Going to miss Corey. Pitch stays wide. Yep, he did a real nice job did down he here. Ever. Redskin land. Two and one. Inside makes it three and one. Of course, the league lost another one of its stalwarts for many, many years. As Scott Elkert has resigned his position over at Jackson Center. The face of this conference will change next year. There's a strike. Even makes a full count of three and two, at least basketball wise. And he did a nice job at Jackson Center as well. Did he ever. Mm -hmm. Balls hit up the center and over the top of the shortstop. Dylan Sanders, and that will be the first hit of the baseball game for Coldwater as Evan Harlemet singles up the middle. Mason Welch will step in and hit. He is the designated hitter today. Mason hits for the left fielder, Justin Kalp. You know, Coach Sanders, he's got to be pleased, obviously, the way Christian McGee is competing out there, but I think he'd like to see him get ahead of the count a little bit. He's going full count on four or five batters here in early going. Getting that pitch count up early. Got to go right at him. He leads off uh, with this hitter with the first pitch ball as well. So I'd like to see him bounce back. I'm sure Coach would like to see him get ahead in the count. Evan Harlan leaning back towards first base as the pitch was made from the left-hander. And snap throw over. one -oh is the count. Yeah, I do like McGee's move to first base. There's a step off the rubber to yeah. come at him. Different look. And the Coldwater Cavaliers are definitely respecting his move to first. They are not getting off very far at all. Playing Welch is a pull hitter. Second baseman over almost to the bag. As goes to 2-0 and as the count. Uh, especially, Dave, you talk about pitch count early in the year. Um, obviously, you used Grudich last night. He's through his 100 pitches. He's done for, for several hit balls, fouled down the right field line. So now you, you want to get as many pitches as you can out of your starter and subsequent relievers. But again, early on, you got to be smart with that as well and make, you, mm -hmm. make sure you feel very comfortable. I'm sure last night uh, Coach Sanders and uh, Mr. Grudich were having a lot of conversations as the game went on, how he felt. Uh, Stolen base opportunity dives in. That will be a stolen base for Evan Harlemet. So runner in scoring position as they did in the opening inning. And just to rest that arm a little bit, Marvin Gretich, uh, Maverick Gretich, typically the shortstop for Fort Laramie, is in the DH role tonight. We go to full count now on Mason Welch. Was he? Swung at that pitch and swung through it. And struck him out. Nice comeback for McGee to get that K in the first out of the inning. Second strike out of the game. That will bring up Curtis Dewar. Curtis is the right fielder. Senior. Hit 3.33 a year ago. Shows bunt, pulled it back. Situation there where Coach Klenke wanted to see what the defensive rotation was for Fort Laramie. Had him square up, take a look. Third baseman stayed home. Calvin Hoying is a long way in on the grass at first base. 
the strike. He was to count at one. McGee back to the plate. Breaking ball. That is a strike. Ball really, and two strikes. Yeah, really doing a great job as Christian McGee of mixing up his speeds. He's got the slow curve ball, the slider. It's, it sets up his fastball nicely as well, and vice versa. His catcher is Will Hoying, a junior, and that ball is grounded to second baseman. It's picked up by Lessig, throws it across the diamond, and Calvin Hoying will record the out. A productive out, though, as yep. Evan Harlemer moves up on the play. So as they did in the opening inning, Cavaliers have a runner to third base for Keegan Runneman, the pitcher. Great opportunity for Bruggeman to help himself. And with two outs, it's always interesting. Two outs, runner on third. Is the pitcher going to go from the stretch or the windup? McGee elects to go with the stretch. Breaking ball. Inside off the plate, ball one. Pitch stays inside. You know we'd like to get an out here with the top of the order coming up. Uh, blasting game, a senior leadoff hitter, and he'd like to get this number nine guy in the order out here without getting a run in. Mr. Barr has a word for everyone. Didn't quite pick up what he was paying attention to, but going to yeah. settle back in and get after it. We're on top of the Redskin dugout. I think it was directed to someone in the dugout, but 3-0 uh, is the count. We're unable to tell who or what that was directed to from our vantage point. 3-0. And taking all the way, we get a walk. Second walk of the game, puts runners on first and third for the leadoff hitter blasting game. He walked in the opening inning, got all the way to third base. Yeah, as you said, the lineup turns over. Blasting game, a 289 hitter from last year. In that leadoff spot, looking to get himself an RBI. Nice play by Will Hoyne to keep that one from going to the backstop. Bruggeman's able to move up. So the runners go to second and third as they had in the opening inning. And now we have a little conference with Will Hoying and Christian McGee. It's time to spring to life with WSN and TV44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. And you can donate online at WTLW.com backslash donate. I really like Will Hoying going out there and talking to McGee right now. Again, two outs in the inning, runners on second and third. Let's dig ourselves out of this a little bit and let this turn into something that snowballs on us. That pitches away. But again, McGee finds himself behind in the count with runners in scoring position. Not an enviable position, Mark. That pitch is inside as he's lost his rhythm a bit. It's 3-0. Yeah, that's that's yeah. seven, six straight balls. They've just had a, a four-pitch walk, and yeah. now yeah, seven goes straight three. Balls. Yeah. And that was a strike at the bottom of the zone. Makes it 3-1. So the hitter's pitch right here for Blazing Game. And that pitch is inside, and for the second time, Marcel Blastingame will walk. Third walk, second of this inning. And that brings up Braylon Harleman. He lined to the third baseman back in the opening inning. Big first pitch here right, right now for McGee. Needs to get ahead in the count, but not lay it down the middle where Harleman can do something with it. 
Lefty on lefty, that's a first pitch strike. Now you can go to work a little bit, making chase yours, Mark. Paint the black here on the 0-1 pitch. That pitch is high, one and one. Tried to overpower it a little bit. That's usually what you're seeing when the ball goes high like that. Christian McGee back to the plate. That wall's hit out to left. That's going to get one in and maybe two. RBI single, Braylon Harlemont. Yeah, Harlemont does a real nice job of keeping his hands back. He's hit the ball to the left side both times, as you said earlier, uh, lined out to third. But that time he gets it over the infield, giving the RBI, and the Cavaliers take the 1-0 lead here in the top of the second. Evan Harlemont scored the run, and that will bring up A.J. Harlemont. Struck out swinging in the opening inning. Starts him off with a breaking ball, which is stays outside. Seventh batter to hit in this inning. And that's going to play the run. Back to the screen it goes. Head first slide, and a wild pitch will get a run in. So two have scored in the inning, and what, what's the old adage, Mark? Yeah. Walks will kill you, and with two outs and one runner on, two walks and a base hit, and now we have two runners in, and Coldwater with two outs, looking to put up a little bit of a crooked, crooked number here in the top of the second. Runners go to first and second, swings through that pitch and fouls it back. It's two and one. Yeah, real good cut there by Harleman. Harleman hit 391 a year ago. First team all-conference player in the MAC. Yeah, he was right up there at the top uh, of the uh, statistical leaderboard for Coldwater and hits and doubles, and RBIs. Good pitch on the inside part of the plate. Makes it two and two. Two and two. Runners on second and third. And got him swinging again. So Christian McGee gets the final out of the inning with a strikeout. Leaving two runners on base, but as we go to the bottom of the second, it'll be cold water two, Fort Laramie nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WSN. We're back at Fort Laramie, and Dave, one of the things I like about high school baseball, you get all kinds of fans, including <laughs> big furry ones at high school baseball games. Megan Sherry got a shot of the excitable dog out there. He's home team trails by a couple. Here's we go to the bottom of the second, though, and he sure he'd like to see a few runs on the board. A few runs, but he's loving <laughs> being out for a walk here. Yeah. Push winner aside. Logan Eilerman will step in. Logan uh, plays center field. Swings through the first pitch by Keegan Bruggeman. Yeah, Bruggeman's been sitting a while now. He comes right back with a strike. Great way to get started after your team gives you a couple runs. That pitch is low, evens the count at once. You know, both of these programs, outstanding programs, oh tradition rich. Fort Laramie, three state championships. Coldwater, what, seven, I think? Okay. That ball's grounded up the middle. Hit to the shortstop, Evan Harlemont. Ball goes across the diamond. The Luke set off. We get an out. Boy, you like to see that, don't you? You just put two on the board, come out, mm -hmm. get the leadoff hitter out right away. Only throw a couple pitches to get it done. Yeah, Coldwater, tradition rich under Coach Brun Brunswick and then Coach Harlemert. And now Coach Klinke taking over. Max Kottner, the left fielder, will step in. You know, of all the numbers looking at, uh, as I kind of, kind of put some prep into this, 
Coldwater has 33 yeah. state uh, MAC championships. MAC championships. They won it last year. Fort Laramie won the Shelby County League last year. Tied with Rushi, who eventually mm -hmm. won a state championship. But my, my point about Coldwater, they have 33 league championships. San Henry is second with nine. I know. It's just amazing. It's just the domination of that team and that, that program and that league. And there's a swinging strike. Uh, put the count at two and two to Max Kotner. Oh, just a bit low. Bruggeman wanted that one. Excellent spot right yes, there. Sir. Excellent spot. Good hold there by Mr. Kotner. Full count. It's two and two, isn't it? Yep. No, two no it's two. three two. They finally got up on the there score, but that's go. what I had. And got him called. Second strikeout is a called strike. Outside part of the corner or outside part of the plate at the knees. Really fine pitch for the second out of the inning. Bring up Darren Eilerman, the right fielder. Yeah, Bruggeman's really starting to spot the ball right where he wants to put it. Tough, tough at bat for Cotton. Ball in on the fist that time and hit foul by Eilerman. Oh, and one's the count, two outs in the inning. The ball's going to be hit foul. Face stayed fair to the third baseman, Howell, and he bobbled it. I thought that ball was headed foul. I agree. It was hugging the line. He made the play on it. That's a tough one right there. That would have been hard to come up with. I'm looking at the scoreboard. I, I personally I think it's put our down, call. I personally thought it was an error. The mm -hmm. scoreboard did not do anything with that. I'm going to call that an E5 if that's okay with you. It is. Christian McGee then will step in. Left-handed pitcher. But I do think that ball bounced a little bit. Uh, Again, agreed. we talked about the grass earlier. Not quite coming back to life, but that's okay. And that situation right there, the third baseman, Mr. Howe, Braxton Howe, had a tough play. As soon as it comes back to life, i got to start mowing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's okay. It is. I look forward yeah, to I that. I do, too. Mm -hmm. There's one hour a day and my phone can't ring. Well, it may ring. We just can't hear it. Well, that's, yeah. One of those account with Eilerman on first base. There's another throw over. Keegan Bruggeman back to the plate. That one's inside and off the glove. That wild pitch will move up the runner. So with two outs, Fort Laramie has a runner in scoring position. See if they can have a little two-out magic here and bring him around. Be huge. That, that's it. Coming into the inning down 2-0. Uh -huh. If you get something out of the bottom eight and nine guys in your order here, that would be, be a good thing for them. Yeah, see if McGee can help himself. Breaking ball that was high, and it goes to 3-0. I'm going to walk off the mound a bit. Sometimes seeing that first left-hander of the day just mm -hmm. kind of throws you off a little bit. Yep. It just is a different viewpoint, different yeah. angle, different look. 3-0. Fastball strike. McGee was taking the whole way, and rightly so. Makes it 3-1 with first base open. Now you get into that hitter's pitch situation at 3-1. McGee's got to be looking dead red fastball right here. And he got it and stayed low. Bruggeman thought he had to pitch right where he wanted it, but instead, McGee will walk. And that will put runners on first and second. First walk of the game for Keegan Bruggeman to go with a pair of strikeouts. That brings back Maverick Gritch to the batter's box. He they single up the middle the first pitch of the game. Yeah, line drive right up the middle. If you're a Fort Laramie baseball fan, you're excited to see him step to the plate with two on, runner in scoring position. 
Breaking ball stayed high. Yeah, talking with Coach Sanders, he said, Maverick Grudich, he's, he's our glue guy. He just he loves the game of baseball. Uh, pitch last night, as we said, would be playing shortstop. If, if he hadn't thrown so many pitches last night, hits ball's hit up in the air to the right fielder. And Braylon Harlemant tracks it down. And he gets out of the inning without giving up any runs. And so we'll go to the top of the third with Coldwater on top, 2 to nothing. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. We're back at Fort Army. We'll go to the top of the third inning. Coldwater Cavaliers on top, 2 to nothing. Back to the hill for inning number three will be Christian McGee. And this inning will begin with Luke Sutoff at the plate. Four, five, six for Coldwater. It'll be a really good idea for Mr. McGee to really bear down right away because, again, gave up two runs last inning. Get that all-important first out. Does a great job of leading off here with a strike against Sutoff. The pitches. Outside and low for a one and one count. Luke hit that uh, kind of odd ball down to the third baseman back in the last inning. We scored it as an error, and we'll see how this uh, bad bat goes for him. That was in the opening inning, I should say. That ball bounces up there. Two and one. Again, I like Christian McGee's moxie out there. He's battling, but. There's some pitches when, when he's not around the plate. It's not around the plate. Good fastball in the hands, yep. fouled back. Real good pitch right there. And that's all part of the early season, Mark. It is, yeah. Where all these young men for both squads, where they're at right now is not where, where they're going to be come mid-May. Same spot with that pitch, tied him up on the inside, but fouled back. MAC play begins on April 6th, so they've got a chance to get several non-conference games in before that uh, particular date. Jammed them. Dave, you almost got a chance to catch yes. one. Yes. You know what? At basketball games, I love to catch the basketball. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're, we're calling a game or whatever. Yeah, sure, when sure. We, when we call baseball games, I duck. And uh, I don't know why. I well, maybe I do know why. That one I knew why. That, yeah, was, that, was, that, that was coming right at us. That is something, uh, something about the size of the ball and the hardness of the ball. A little <laughs> different. A little different. Here we are, 2-2 two -two count here as we in the top of the third. Same pitch, same result. Talk about Mac play beginning on April 6th. Coldwater will be at St. Henry that night. For recovery of Parkway, Versailles at New Bremen. Delphi St. John's will be at New Knoxville. And Marion Local will be at Minster. Open up Mac play. You can just tell Luke Sutoff, he's just excited to be playing baseball again uh, in league play. Again, injured last year. That pitch is outside to Luke Sutoff, and we're in a full count situation. Of course, the Shelby County Athletic League began last night. We talked about Fort Laramie defeated Anna 4 to nothing. Houston beat Farrell on 10 to 1. Full count pitch, and got him swinging. Really nice pitch there by McGee. Great at bat from the circle for him as well, from the hump to get Sutoff out of there. Get that first out of the inning here in the top of the third. Braxton Howe will step in. He was out one to three in the first inning to end the first inning. Breaking ball, and that's a strike. That pitch right there is just, it's unhittable, and if you do make contact with it, you're not going to be able to do much with it. That's a great pitch from Christian McGee right there. Curveball coming in on the outside corner. That line drive up the middle. Very solid contact from Braxton Howe. So, yeah, McGee threw a really, really good first pitch. That second one, he put it right down the middle, right at the waist. And Braxton Howe knew what to do with it. Solid single to center field. Third hit of the game. 
in non-conference action last night. Covington defeated Botkins 10-3 to to throw to first base. Conference is back in action on March 30th. Rushi will go to Fairlawn. Anna goes to Jackson Center. Botkins will come here to play Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie also plays on Saturday down at Triad in a non-conference matchup. And Dave, Dave, as we always say this time of year, pending on the weather. Pending on the weather. <laughs> A one's a count. What do they say? If you don't like the weather in Ohio yeah. this time of year, just wait. It'll change. You and I will be at uh, Lincoln View on Wednesday night. They play Van Wert. That game will air on Thursday night on WOSN. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Again, both programs have experienced a lot of success in the last few years. Of course, the uh, Lincoln View Lancers went all the way to the state championship mm -hmm. game last year where they lost to two Rushi Raiders in the finals. Rushi's got a fine baseball team this year. Many of those players are returning after their state basketball run. And that was Three one of the, one. the pieces, again, with that state basketball run. They, they used that game against Lincoln View in baseball last spring as a catalyst to compete with Richmond Heights saying, you know, we went against one of the best pitchers in the area, and Mr. Price from Lincoln View. Uh, <laughs> we know what we're getting into playing Richmond Heights. <laughs> you see the ball just yeah. laid on the back of, of Braxton Howe. <laughs> now, again, if he steps off the back with yeah. that, he's not out, but he, it, it would he might be argue. <laughs> he might argue. <laughs> uh, three and one's the count. But, yeah, Rushi. Congratulations to them again on their or basketball run and then also on their uh, baseball state championship last year. It's a walk to Evan Harlemont to go with a single he had earlier today. So with two outs, we have run or one out, we have runners on first and second, and that will bring up uh, Mason Welch, who struck out in the second inning. Also this week, if you're catching up on activities on the WOSM, we'll be at the Salina Track Meet on Saturday, that will air Sunday night at 6 p.m. There's a bunt. And picked up by the pitcher, thrown over to the second baseman, Kyle Lessig covering, so they get to sacrifice and move runners up. Excellent execution both ways. Great sacrifice bunt by Mason Welsh, and Fort Laramie does a nice job of getting me out. Curtis Dewar will head step in now with two outs. Curtis grounded out to the second baseman last inning. Christian McGee has had two runners on or multiple runners on in every inning. Two he in has, the opening, yeah. two in this one. Mm -hmm. He's played he, it a couple runs last inning. He's had a runner on third every inning now. But he keeps battling. I love his tenacity out there. Good play by Will Hoyne to keep that one from skipping past him. Also on a Sunday evening, Van Wert and Bryan baseball, which will be played on Saturday, assuming the weather cooperates that way, Sunday after the track meet at about 8 o'clock on WOSN. Swinging strike. One one's the count, two outs. Yeah, Will Hoying looking over to the dugout. That ball went off his glove. It's almost like he got crossed up, but I don't I don't think he was saying that to the dugout. Just didn't come up with it, but they got the strike and I wasn't sure whether the ball happened. was contact with the bat or not yeah. when I saw it skip off his glove a bit. And that ball's hit down to the third baseman. Foul. Makes the count one and two on Curtis Dewar. So one and two, runners on second and third, two outs. A big pitch right here for Christian McGee and his Fort Laramie Redskins. Yeah, work the corners, make him go chase something. Got him. Great pitch to end the inning. Pitch on the inside part of the plate, second to strike out of the inning, fourth of the game. And the score will remain 2 to nothing. Coldwater as we head to the bottom of the third. You're watching High School Baseball on WSN. 
We're back at Fort Laramie. We're headed to the bottom of the third. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Meyer and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Shine Dave Bowen here from Fort Laramie. The cold water on top, two to nothing, and back to the mound. Keegan Bruggeman, and this time he will go batters two, three, and four in the order. That would be Dylan Sanders, Calvin Hoying, and Roger Hoying. First pitch strike. Nice little curve ball there, and yeah, Fort Laramie, meet of the order, two, three, and four. They'd like to make some noise here in the bottom of three. Pitch is high. One and one. Ball's grounded up to the middle. Shortstop Evan Harleman makes the play, throws it across the diamond. Luke set off first out. So Sanders hits the ball hard again as he had the double in the first inning. But this time right to Evan Harleman. And he double deuces out there at shortstop, throws him out at first. Brings Calvin Hoying to the plate. Struck out swinging in the opening inning. One of two strikeouts today for Bruggeman. That ball's grounded up the middle as well. Instant replay. Yeah, I've seen that play before as Calvin Hoying Grounds out to the shortstop again. This time, of course, to Evan Harlem at the Luke Sutoff. Two six threes in a row. Just great footwork out there by Har Harlem Merton as well. Catches the ball and pitch and catch with his first baseman. Roger Hoying, fielder's choice, put him on base in the opening inning. Bruggeman steps back. Bruggeman with a great opportunity to have himself a really quick inning here. First one, two, three, and if he can get this hitter. And strike on the opening pitch. Ground ball snagged by the pitcher. Bruggeman just going to step on first base himself, and it was a short inning for him. We'll go to the top of the fourth. It's 2-0 Coldwater. You're watching High School Baseball on WSN. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standing for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. And today we had kind of an announcer, announcer's little get-together last night. And Ryan Shadowall, we kind of brought his name up last night. He is the one who does all that uh, schedule online, ticker, stats, information, and Ryan just does a great job for us uh, at WSM. We're certainly pleased with what he does. Absolutely does. Works on the app as well, I believe. Yep, he does. Just a great job, great informational piece, pieces from Ryan, and I know that all of our WSM viewers appreciate the opportunity to either see it at the ticker or go to the app and find out what's going on with high school sports. Keegan Bruggeman steps in, ball in the first pitch in the dirt. 1-0 is the count. As we're in the top of the fourth inning. That pitch is also wide. It's 2-0. Again, baseball, a game of subtle momentum at times. Bruggeman has the great, or McGee has the great, no, excuse me. Bruggeman has the great inning on the mound, the last half inning. And he comes up first in this part of the inning, has an opportunity to get on base and, We'll see what happens. Walked in his only appearances back in the second inning. He was the second Cavalier to score today. And McGee brings a strike. Nice comeback pitch for Christian McGee right there because, as you said, Brugman walked before. He's going to make you bring it across the plate, 3-1. The count now. Back again. Makes it full count. He had a couple of, in the opening inning where he got two strikes and then got, got into a, a hole a bit. But uh, now this time it's going the other way around. See if he can climb the ladder all the way back. Fouled back. Good cut. Full count. Blaster game, the top of the order, and Braylon Harleman to follow in this inning. Cavaliers are hoping for more. Yeah. 
And he missed. Second time in the game that Keegan Bruggeman has walked. That's the fourth walk in the game. And we go to the top of the order, Marcel Blassingame, who has singled and walked today. Take a look at his coach, Corey Klinke, to see what kind of a play they want to put on here. Do you run your pitcher, Dave? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I want to get him a nice, solid lead here, put pressure on the defense. Swinging strike. Tomorrow night we'll get to see Eric Fishpaw, the coach at Lincoln View. And, he, of course, he had a kind of a pretty good player play for him a year ago. Pitched them to the state championship where they lost to Rushi. But uh, he was a leadoff hitter. I said, Coach, you let him steal bases? He said, absolutely. When he's on base, he's a baseball player. Yep, Landon Price. Landon Price. Playing for the Ohio State University. Swinging strike. A pitch that was in the dirt. Makes it 0-2. And we're going to get a little meeting at the mound now as Coach Sanders will go out and discuss things with uh, his team, how they want to defend this defensively. Oh, and two is the count here as we are in the top of the fourth inning. Obviously, Coach Sanders has seen something he wants to address. Not your typical mound visit, 0-2, oh, oh, yeah. runner on first, nobody out. But again, early season, take these opportunities to teach, teach, teach. And that's exactly what Coach Sanders is doing right there. Talked about Rushi State Championship. They defeated Fort Laramie 7 to 1 last year in the regional semifinal before going on to the state tournament. So the count is 0 and 2 with that runner on first base in the form of Keegan Bregman. And Christian McGee will bring it back to the plate. Defensive swing that time. Nice pitch there. Yeah. That was almost in the catcher's glove. Yeah. He was able to get just yep. enough bat on it to slap it towards the first base dugout. Yeah, I got to give credit both ways. Nice pitch. And, uh, again, Blazing Game does a nice job of staying back and just getting a piece of it to stay alive. Pitch is high. One and two. Kika Bruggeman has not shown much interest in trying to steal second base. Got an average size lead or so, but it's not made any break yet. Another defensive swing. That ball's going to be tough to play, but McGee makes a good flip play to first base. Way to field the position yes, right there. The runner does move up on the play, but yes, Christian McGee to Calvin Hoying for the first out of the inning. Not only that, but a really good play by the first baseman, Calvin Hoying, instead of him making a break for a ball, which would have left the base uncovered. He trusted. McGee to get to it. He made a nice play with it. Works like a sacrifice, so it doesn't go down that way in the book. And here comes uh, Braylon Harlemant. That is absolutely a great point, Mark, about the first baseman having to make a decision. Shows bunt, but the ball is outside. He brought the back. Did not offer at the pitch. Calvin Hoying made the decision to trust the athleticism of his pitcher. Braylon Harlemant has uh, lined out and singled today as an RBI. Ball two. Again, getting behind in the count with runners in scoring position. Not a recipe for success in any way, shape, or form. Let's see how McGee battles back. Comes back and gets a strike. Nice pitch right there. You can say you have first base open, but you're in the meat of yeah. the cold water lineup at two, three, and four right now. Two and one. McGee back to the plate. That ball is fouled away. And headed back to take a look at it at the screen is Will Hoying. Runs out of real estate to get there. So he battles right back after being down 2-0, 2-2 oh, two, two now. Christian McGee here in inning number four. Gets the sign. Let's see what he comes with, Mark. 
The good play by Will Hoink. Went with the curveball, the fast curveball, if you will. More of the slider type situation, but it just started low and stayed low. You don't throw that pitch unless you trust your catcher to make a play like he just did. Yeah. Will Hoying did a great job right there, keeping that ball in front of him. Full count. And got him looking. Really nice pitch yes, right sir. there. Froze Harlemert. And as a result, second out of the inning, and again, McGee has dealt with runners in scoring position every inning, but he's only allowed two up to this point. See if he can work out of the jam. It's his fifth strikeout. Two of them have been to the man plate here, A.J. Harlemont. Breaking ball stays outside and high. Got under that one a little bit as he was releasing it, and it sailed on him just a tad. Didn't come across the strike zone. Fastball is high as well, 2-0. Two outs with a runner on second base in the form of Keegan Bregerman. 3-0. Not sure about you, Dave. First base I'm, is I'm, open. First base is open. <laughs> you know, you got a dangerous guy uh, who struck huh? out twice, and it's 3-0. Yep. I'd be thinking about the, he's not going to, I'm not going to make him to swing at. And he got a strike. Well, okay. 3 1 now. 3 1. Hitter's pitch. And again, I wouldn't be too fat with this pitch. Make him hit something that might be on the corner. And if you walk him, like we said, first base is well, open. He struck him out twice today. Spins back to the second base. Colin Lessick puts the tag down a little late. When it's your number three hitter that struck out twice, yeah, you can say <laughs> we're looking at that third one, but you can also say he's due. And I would lean on that side of the equation right now. And he walked. Again, not a, not a bad base on balls. Nope, not at all. But Luke Sutoff coming to the plate now again. Started as a sophomore. So it's not like he misses junior year and hadn't had varsity time. He, he was a contributor for this Coldwater Cavalier Club as a sophomore. Luke's been on by an air and has struck out today as well. And that pitch is low. Again, ahead in the count. So Sutoff's going to. Settle in here and look to drive the, the baseball here with two outs. McGee's got to dance a little bit. Dives back in. You know, Dave, both runners have those uh, sliding gloves on, or what do they call them now? They look like oven bits to me. <laughs> <laughs> and the, to see, every time I see one, they get bigger. Yeah. Like, like, you know, if you're going to steal and, and dive into a, you might as well get the biggest one exactly. you can find and dive head first yep. into the base. And, yep. and obviously the bases are bigger now in yeah, Major League gonna, Baseball. I was and, just going to go there as yeah. well. Bigger bases, bigger gloves. one is the count. I don't know. I just low. feel deprived. We used, we used our bare hands going back to the base. <laughs> Two oh. Fouled up. Dave, I can tell you, I <laughs> played baseball for the legendary in, in Allen County, Lima, Ohio area, Joe Bowers. Okay. And uh, I, I was a, I was a, quite a pitcher. I was actually a thrower, but I dove into a base head first one time, and he came out and chewed me from mm. one up uh, for weeks. I think he yelled at me because pitchers do not go into a base hands first. Makes total sense. Uh, mm -hmm. That ball's popped up. First baseman, Calvin Hoyne, cracks it down. And he gets out of the inning again without giving up a run. Coldwater still up 2-0, though, as we head to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Meyerig and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. We appreciate their support today. Our scoreboard shows the Coldwater Cavaliers on top of 
the Fort Laramie Redskins 4 nothing as Fort Laramie comes calling here in the bottom of inning number four. Mark Shine, Dave Bowen here. And Dave, the wind has about died. It's about as nice as you can have for a, a late March day. That's what I was just thinking. The sun's popped out nice and bright. You'd think it was a 75-degree day out there right now. Here's Colin Lessig to step in. He's only played appearance today. We ended the first inning with a strikeout. And back on the mound comes Keegan Bruggeman. Keegan's only struck out two, Dave. He's only walked one. Yeah, and he's kept the leadoff batter off the bases, except in the bottom of the first when Maverick Grudich led off with a single. It was a bunt, kind of a defensive type bunt. The pitch was up and in. I like the thought right there from Coach Sanders. Let's see if we can make some noise, put the defense at a disadvantage as far as making them execute the play. Unable to get the bunt down, though. One and one's the count on Lessick. Grounded to third. Braxton Howell with a pickup, throws it across the diamond, and finds Luke Sutoff. First out of the inning. There's your continuation of getting the opening hitter, mm -hmm. which you just mentioned a moment ago, as Logan Eilerman will step in. Excellent ex execution right there by Braxton Howe at third base for Coldwater. I really liked how he set his feet and threw to first, didn't, didn't rush things, even though the runner was getting down the line. Logan Eilerman started inning at number two with a ground out to the shortstop as he swings and misses on that pitch. So Braxton now set his feet and then showed his arm. Nice, nice gun over there to first base. Oh, and he hit him with a pitch. Well, we mentioned a year ago he had 12 batters, and as you said, Dave, you don't dig in against that kind <laughs> of guy. And But, you know, Bruggeman, he has not been wild at all today. No. He hasn't come close to hitting anybody, but he did get a piece of Logan Eilerman right there. So yeah. with one out, we got a runner on first. Let's see what Max, Cot Max Kottner can do. Took a called third strike in inning number two. Max is the right, is the left fielder. Outside is opening pitch. Yeah, let's see if that gets something going here in the mm -hmm. inning for him. Mm -hmm. First pitch, a ball that favors the batter now, going into pitch number two, 1 0 count. Swinging strike. Ruckman had put down the last four batters since he had a three out inning or three batter inning back in inning number three. Before the hit batter there with Max Kotner. Here's Eilerman, senior right fielder. Excuse me, this is Kotner, isn't it? I'm yeah, it's one, Kotner. One, one ahead of myself in the batting order. Max Kotner, the right, the left fielder. He's not getting cheated up no, there with his not. swings. He's getting his cuts in. He just needs to make contact here, but finds himself down one and two as Bruggeman shakes off the sign. Darren Eilerman is on deck. And got him called. Nice pitch again, yes, right at the knees. Hard to do anything with that. Man, I feel sorry for Max yeah. Kottner right there. He's got two of the three strikeouts today, and both of them have been kind of in the exact same spot, that low fastball at the bottom of the zone. And now we'll have Darren Eilerman in. He was on by an error back in inning number two. High fastball. Bruggeman has done a nice job of keeping his pitch count down. Well, I've started to think you start thinking right in this time of the game, mm -hmm. and particularly in the early part of the season, balls in the dirt. Good job stopping that one by A.J. Harlemet. You know, at what point do you either run up the pitch count by a rule or by just the fact it's early in the season and start looking to see when the, that reliever pops in the game. That pitch is high, makes it 3-0. Tried to overthrow that maybe, Dave? Yeah, a little bit. That's just where I was going to go again. Bruggeman 
uh, we're getting into the fourth inning. Even though his pitch counts down a little bit, he's starting to get a little high with his pitches. Again, a, a sign that maybe he's starting to fatigue just a little bit out there. And it will be, end up being a four-pitch walk. His second walk of the game. That moves Logan Eilerman up to second and bring Christian McGee to the plate. Christian has one of those walks today. And again, I love what A.J. Harlemert's doing right now. Go out and talk to his pitcher. Let's get reestablished here. We need one out. Okay, Thanks. we're going to get a pinch hitter, Dave. Okay. Uh, check a number here. I think it was number five, Levi Gephardt. Levi is a uh, junior. Will pinch hit. Here in the fifth. Now the main thing I think Gephardt's got to be right now is unless that's dead red fastball down the middle, he needs to be patient. Brugeman struggling just a little. Foul back. And it was right down the middle. He liked what he saw there. Yep. Good solid swing. Christian McGee, the left-handed hitter, walked in his uh, first appearance today, taken down for a pinch hitter here. <laughs> With two outs. Breaking ball frozen, but stayed on the inside. Yeah, really good call by yeah. the home plate umpire. That was high at the batter and then dropped a little bit and off the plate just a hair. One and one's our count. Swinging strike. One and two's the count. Gephardt's had two good cuts here. One and two. Got to protect the dish now. Put the ball in play. Takes off the initial sign. Let's see what it comes with. Yeah. Got him. Called third, third strike. Takes the pitch hitter out with strikeout number four of the game. Maintaining his team's 2 to nothing lead as we go to the top of the fifth. You're watching High School Baseball on WSN. Wholesale changers here as we go to the top of the fifth inning for the Fort Lauderdale Redskins. They bring in Dylan Sanders, who was playing shortstop to pitch. Colin Lessick moves from second to shortstop. Max Grudich, who had been the DH today, has moved into the role of the second baseman. Alex Berger is at first base, and the previous first baseman, Calvin Hoying, is now behind the plate. So we're moving them all over the place here, Dave. So our new player then is Alex Berger, correct? Alex Berger, that's mm -hmm. correct. Dylan Sanders on to pitch. And his first batter that Dylan faces is number nine, Braxton Howell. Braxton has a hit today. Pitches in the dirt. And we'll make the count two and one. Caught me by surprise. I got to do a quick addition here on what McGee did. Swinging strike. So we got what, four innings, Dave? Is that correct? Four innings. Looks like. Uh, and got him with a called strike. So Sanders pops in from his. Second base for the shortstop position, strikes out the first batter he faces. That will bring Evan Harleman to the plate. Harleman singled and walked today, but on base both times, scored a run, scored the first run of the game. And there's a strike for a uh, pitch for a strike. So yeah, Dylan Sanders coming in, throwing BBs right across the plate, attacking the batters. Two runs, three hits. Struck out five, walked five, and had a wild pitch today, did McGee. Both runs earned. Both runs were earned. I was just looking to try to confirm that. Thank you. 
That pitch is a strike as well. One and two is the count. So what you want your reliever to do, right, Dave? Pop yeah. in and throw strikes. Mm -hmm. And that pitch is fouled back by Harleman. Yeah, as we've talked, McGee, he's <laughs> avoided trouble for every inning except one where he gave up two runs in the second. You bring in Sanders, and if he can have a one, two, three inning, a subtle shift in momentum, and see what you can do on your side of the fifth inning. Spoiled that one by tapping it foul towards the Fort Laramie dugout as we're in the top of the fifth inning here on the Reese Meyer and Company CPA scoreboard. Dylan Sanders, senior, breaking ball in the dirt. Doesn't quite come through right now with that breaking ball. Just leaves it short. Got to push off the mound and twist it out of the fingers there and let it work for you. Trying to aim it a little bit. Fastball inside. Two batters up, two batters strike, strike out. He is not doing that with his fastball, though. Nice, nice velocity on the heater. Third hitter in the inning is Mason Welch. He's a strikeout victim. Also had a really nice sack bunt. Back in inning number three. Missed with his pitch there. Yeah, outside. good spot, good yeah. spot. Ground ball up the middle and hops off the shortstop. Lessick to the second baseman. Did it get him? Nope. Good efforts. Colin Lessick, who had been playing second base, shifted over to short. That ball hopped off his glove. And there was Max Grinich to try to make a play, but couldn't quite get there in time. Tough hop off the yep. edge of the infield. I'm not going to say a lip. There's no lip out there, but right at the edge of the green, the grass, it bounced up. We're going to get a pinch hitter now for Coldwater. This looks like number 16. That's Paul Busher, a senior, will hit for Curtis Dewar. Left-handed hitter. Paul Busher's father, Tim, was up here to see us a little bit ago. Tim, a longtime OHSAA Basketball and baseball official and umpire, respectively. Good pitch on the inside part of the plate. Has him hopping back a bit. Open pitch strike. Two strikeouts and that tough air on the shortstop have been three batters faced by Dylan Sanders here in the fifth. Breaking ball. Missed with that one. Make it one and one. And Paul Busher, one of the eight seniors on this cold water club, looking for leadership from all of them. Busher with a chance to show that leadership with the bat right now. Two and one. Sanders back to the plate, foul ball back. Levels the count at twos. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Coldwater up two to nothing here in the inning at number five. Making a couple runs that they score back in inning number two. Stand up so far, trying to tack on right here. Sanders trying to keep it right where they're at. And that ball's golfed down the left field line. That's going to drop. Got to play at third, and they're going to bring the runner back. Boy, he wanted to get to third. <laughs> He, he did. He had designs, didn't he? But he thought better of it, and I think it was a good decision, but a nice piece of hitting as Paul Busher gets the single to left field and puts runners on first and second, where at one point it looked like Sanders was going to have a quick inning. Now he's got two runners on with two outs. Busher and then, first. Uh, yep. Dur Curtis Durr comes back in to run. He, the player who had been replaced, uh, in the batting order, anyway, he's back in now. His re-entered situation, and the hitter is Keegan Bruggeman. Keegan's walked both times. He's been up today. Yeah, showing a real good eye at the plate. 
But again, an opportunity as a pitcher to help himself get a greener in the outfield. Maybe he can score a run. And they got it picked off a second. Threw it to second, to third. They're going to run him back. And still caught in the pickle. And they finally got him. So they pick him off of second base on a heads up play by Dylan Sanders. I'll let my partner, Mr. Bowen, figure out how to score that one. <laughs> I got it one to four to five to six. You got that? I think that's what it was. Good for you, man. You know what? Because I have no idea. <laughs> one to four to five to six. And you know, when you're, you're preseason, when you're in the gym, yeah. and you're not able to be out on the field, you're working on pickles a lot, and they did a great job of executing it right there. That they did. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. We're still a cold water two and four alarm or nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. <laughs> bottom of the fifth coming up here from Fort Larby. They will go to the top of the order. And that will mean Maverick Grittich, Dylan Sanders, Calvin Hoying to hit. Breaking ball. First pitch from Keegan Bruggeman is low to start the fifth inning. I think we're going to see a great at bat by Grittich right here. He's got to figure out a way to get on base. Swinging strike that time. Help his team out. Down two to zero. Started today as a designated hitter, played, moved to second base at the top of this inning. Coming off a wonderful pitching performance last night. That ball's fouled to the screen. One and two is the count. Excited to see how he battles with two strikes. We talk about being a two strike hitter. Got a little Wade Boggs on us. At bats just now starting. I don't know what the percentage of our viewing audience knows <laughs> who Wade Boggs is. Fastball away, two and two. And if you don't know, Google it. Google it. He is one of the best to play the game. Full count. You talked about him battling in this opening at yeah. bat. That's what mm -hmm. he's doing. Sure is. You know, usually we talk about the shadows creeping in at Major League Parks. Well, the tree shadows are coming in from right field. And swinging strike, he got him. Great, great pitching execution there by Brueggemann to get Grudich. Fifth strike out of the game for him. Dylan Sanders will move in to hit. Dylan has a double and grounded out to the shortstop in his two previous appearances. Did he go or didn't he? He'd, well, it's a strike anyway. I'm not sure it was called or swinging. I think they appealed it, and they did call the strike. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right across the top of the zone. Oh, and one's the count. And now quick 0-2 as he snapped that across the outside part of the plate. And I wasn't really surprised that first pitch by Bruggeman being a little high. The adrenaline flowing after getting... Gurdich out. They know each other, these guys. <laughs> he knew that was a big out. And got him swinging there. Chased a breaking ball. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Six strikeouts now, including back to back. And in fact, he ended inning number four with a strikeout. So he's got three in a row and but the four out of the last five <laughs> yeah, it's, So they're, they're coming in bunches now. We're going to keep playing the stats. We're going to keep looking back. You're right. But not right there. Uh -uh. That ball's ripped by Calvin Hoying. As he gets a solid single. Yeah, it's hit the ball hard twice. Grounded out to short last time. But that time right there, excellent piece of hitting. Line drive over the shortstop's head. Two out single. Very quickly looking back. First hit since the opening inning. Is that correct? I read through my score sheet really quickly here. That is correct. Yeah. First two hitters of the game who were on mm -hmm. base through by hits, and that's the first hit since then. Here's Roger Hoying in. Roger Hoying, opening pitch strike to him. He's reached on a fielder's choice and then an out to the first baseman. Gets to play the pitcher made the play and ran over to first base and that's right kind of stepped on the that's bag right. there breaking ball Looks like a really good pitch but it stayed outside or broke outside and count levels at one I stand corrected you're right 
Nice athletic play by Brueggemann last time Hoang was up. Counts one and one as Keegan Brueggemann steps off the mound. Two and one as the ball's high. Long hold and Time batter out stepped out. Batter, yeah. yeah. We see, we've seen yeah. it throughout the game. Uh, Keegan Brueggemann shaking off his catcher quite a bit. Mark, do you think he's looking for a new pitch or is he just shaking just, him off uh, to let, he, let the batter think, okay, which pitch, which pitch, which pitch, and then he comes back with the original <laughs> signal from the catcher. All right. Yeah, they're we're not on some, the same yeah, page. Some discussions yep. about mm -hmm. uh, how, how we're going to do this as uh, his catcher goes to the mound, hard limit. I'm going to get on yeah. the same page yeah. here. Good piece. That's that's really heads-up play. Uh -huh. you, you know, why, why throw something? Might end up in the dirt or you cross your catcher up or, you know, that that's a really heads-up play. It's it's a close ball game, and you don't want to, you know, do anything foolish right here that might cost you a run. Yeah, how many times have you seen one pitch and momentum changes and then you just can't shut the door and next thing you know? Two outs in the inning. Yeah, two three ones four the runs to There's a foul ball, a pitch that was inside. Makes it count two and two. And we're not in any hurry because, as we said, baseball, we talked about it between innings yeah. of shot, not shot clock, but the pitch clock in Major League Baseball. And <laughs> this game is defined, one of the ways it's defined is that there's no clock. Correct. Back to the mound he comes, swinging strike three. Struck out the side that time around a, a single by Calvin Hoying. We will go to the top of the sixth. It's still 2-0 Cavaliers. You're watching High School Baseball on WSN. We're back at Fort Lomarie where we go to the top of the sixth inning. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Smyrin Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Shine, Dave Bowen. That is going to hurt Keegan Bruggeman. Let him shake that off wow. a little bit. Walk it off, yep. He's not just going to feel that, no, that the rest uh, of this that bad. He's going to feel it tonight and probably the next two or three days. Right on the arch on his left foot. Well, they already had Justin Kalp kind of throwing down in the bullpen-like area. I'm not sure whether it was just because of pitch count, because I wanted to give him a little work. That was before he bounced that ball off his foot. He has pitched five innings today. And he wants to get back in there. Yeah, he's got a chance to help himself. I'm not going to take myself out of the game as, unless it's broke, Coach. I'm ready to go. Climbs back in with our 0-1 count. Ready to battle. Dylan Sanders back on the mound for his second inning of work. That one got away from him. Breaking ball that came out of his hand funny. Put a little smile on his face, too, didn't it? <laughs> I think he knew that one was just one to chalk up and yep. throw me another one. Let's get started. Fouled back. One and two is the count. He's around the plate, isn't he? He is around the, the plate. Balls, uh, That's what I – Brueggemann took a big cut at that one. Don't want to lay one in there too fat on this pitch because uh, Keegan's got you timed down a little bit. And you are correct. Hits it out to the left fielder. It's snagged out there by Max Kotner. And get opening out on the fly out to the left fielder and brings blasting game to the plate. Got to hit them where they ain't. Brueggemann makes good contact, but as you said, Kotner makes a nice play in left field. One out in the inning. Marcel blasting game has walked twice, hit a ground ball with a shortstop back in inning number four. Breaking ball in the dirt. 
Yeah, his windup changes a little bit right now, does Sanders when he's throwing that breaking ball. He's got to work on coming with the same delivery and letting the ball work out of his hands on that breaker. Ball's hit up in the air. The easier play perhaps that time for Kottner, and we had a second fly ball out of the inning to him. And that brings up Braylon Harlemont. And as in the fifth inning, Fort Laramie has an opportunity to retire the side one, two, three. They weren't able to get it done in the fifth. Let's see if they can do it here. Quick inning and get back in there and get the bats out. Harlemont's one for three today. Single in inning number two. A little bit off of that breaking ball. Yeah, he's working at it. Again, <laughs> first week of the season, second game, first time on the mound. I like what, what he's working at. He's going to get that down, but right now he's just trying to feel it out, find his way. Fastball in, 2 O's the count. Swinging strike, 2-1. and one. He doesn't mess around out there either. Catches it, gets on the rubber. Ready to deliver. Popped up. This is headed to the right fielder. Max Eilerman makes the catch. Three fly ball outs. We we'll go to the bottom of the yeah, six. First one, two, three inning. There you go. Coldwater two, Fort Laramie nothing. We're headed to the bottom of the six. You're watching high school baseball on WSN. Did you know WSN is a viewer-supported nonprofit ministry? Every spring we launch a spring funding campaign. Would you make a donation? Our goal is $50,000. Donate online at WTOW.com backslash donate. Or you can call 419-339-4444. The Spring to Life funding campaign continues through Mother's Day. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Keegan Bruggeman has kept the Fort Lauderdale Redskins off the scoreboard so far. He is back for inning number six, and he will start off with Colin Lessig. Five, six, and seven for Fort Laramie. And again, Mark, right here, when you get into the late end, at a 2-0 ball game, that first at-bat, so important for the offense, that first at-bat, so important for the pitcher and the defense. The rest of the inning really can be dictated off of that first at-bat a lot of the time a lot of the time in high school baseball. So you got to bear down as a pitcher and you got to really dig in as a hitter. And that, that's what really makes this game fun. One and one's our count. And now one and two. Doesn't look like his foot's bothering him at all, does it? After nope. slamming that ball off of it a moment ago. One and two here in the top, bottom of the sixth inning from Fort Laramie. Two and two. Just got to make contact if you're Colin Lessing. Put the ball in play. Make the defense execute. And if you're um, Bruggeman, Keegan Bruggeman, you want to put him in the book by yourself right now. Foul ball. I know you were keeping track of, of first uh, what each first batter of the inning did. Was it only one inning the first leadoff batter got on? Yeah. Um, That's what I thought you said a moment yeah, ago. Yeah, Maverick. Gurdich led off the game with that single up the middle. Two and two. Ground ball. Third baseman makes the play. Across the diamond goes Braxton Howell's throw. And there it continues, Dave. Yeah. And now Fort Lormie has put the ball in play with the leadoff yep. hitter every inning. There's not been a strikeout, but right there again, Braxton Howe at third base, he's had a couple plays. You can say they're routine, but again, early in the season, Coldwater's first game, I really like his confidence down there at the uh, third base, and he's done a real nice job uh, getting the assist. There's a bunt by Logan Eilerman, and boy, that and that dirt and that the grass over there, if that uh, doesn't skip foul, that's going to die and be a great bunt, but yep. a little bit of top spin English on it, it kicks sideways on him. Would have been an infield yes, single, sir. no doubt. And again, the base pass here at Fort Laramie, all grass, not cut out. I thought it had an opportunity or a chance too. of dying yep. in fair play. Doesn't do so. So we go back with a strike thought on that was a, Thought that was a really smart senior play right there, mm -hmm. the attempted bunt. Third baseman's deep. There's a ground ball. Pitcher snagged it. Ruggerman's going to underhand it to the first baseman, and 
Gets it over to Luke Sutoff, and they get to two quick outs here on that ground ball. So Keegan Brueggemann again. Nice inning here. Just seems to be getting stronger as the game is going on. And it's going to be a, a decision for Coach Klinke to stay with him in the seventh. He's, his pitch count's getting up there a little bit now as well. And, again, another reason – you might go all seven innings with him, but you might also bring somebody else in. Again, it's your first game. You you want to get some guys, some experience out there on the mound, but, man, it's going to be tough to take him out if he retires the side here. First pitch was a strike to Max Cotton. The second pitch grounded past the third baseman, and it's quickly 0-2 to Max Cottner. On to close out a three batter inning here in inning number six and got him with a call strike three. That's the third time he's fooled Max Kotner with a third pitch strike. We're going to go to the top of the seventh. It's cold water two, Fort Army nothing. You're watching high school baseball, WSN. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. And Dave, we've got the third pitcher in for the Fort Lauderdale Redskins today. That would be sophomore Gabe Hart. Dylan Sanders, two innings. Did not allow a run, one hit, struck out a couple, didn't walk anybody, did his job. He gets a hold, right? And that's Absolutely. the idea behind it anyway. Yep. Yep. And again, an opportunity for Fort Lormer to go with a third pitcher here, get some early season experience against a quality program, obviously, as we stated earlier in Coldwater. Here's Darren Eilerman to lead off here in the top of the seventh. All of our runs were scored back in inning number two. That will be a single. Yeah, A.J. Harleman with a the single Harlemet. right there between short and third. A.J. Harleman. See, that's a uh, – see, one for three today. Yep, one look for three it. with a walk. So he gets his first hit of the year, if you will, in the top of the seventh inning here. Here's Luke Sutoff to hit. Stole the base opportunity. Here's the throw down and head first slide safe. Harleman explosive. Got a great jump, and then he had great wheels as well right there. Puts himself in scoring position. Coldwater would love to add on a run here in well, the top of the seventh inning. One run makes a difference, not only in a, in a physical sense of the game, but in an emotional sense. You, you, just, you, you, just put, you just look one more reason to look at the scoreboard and say, ah, the bottom of the seventh is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Good stop by our catcher, Calvin Hoying. Yeah, great observation, Mark. Another run right here for Coldwater with Fort Lormley only having three outs to play with. Really going to be a challenge. Sutoff still looking for his first hit of the game. Pitch in the dirt. Off he goes again. So back-to-back -back stolen bases and... All of a sudden, we've got A.J. Harleman standing at uh, third base with nobody out. And a 2-1 count on the hitter, Luke Sutoff. And that's going to bring the infield in, as one might expect. Do everything they can to keep this run from scoring. Yeah, they've got to pull in tight now. A.J. Harleman, second on the team last year with 10 stolen and bases. That ball is ripped to the right fielder. It's caught. And on the sack fly, we get a run out of it. Nicely done there. Nice piece of hitting by Sutoff. Give him the sacrifice fly. Gets an RBI. And how about the wheels of A.J. Harleman set that up? The wheels and, and uh, again, a little bit of nuance to the game. Our, our first baseman, first of all, he had a hard time catching that ball because the sun, the sun right. field coming in his eyes. 
technically he might have turned the wrong way, you know, to go to home from first, but just a technicality right there. I think we're, they were going to score Harlem at regardless. His wheels are strong, but catching the ball was tough against the Sun, first of all, and then second of all, being able to turn and get the throw to home, not in time, no throw made. Braxton Howell is one for three, fouls that one back, makes the count one and one. Runs have been scored today by Evan Harlemet, Keegan Bruggeman, and now A.J. Harlemet. Slow breaking ball. Makes it two and one. Yeah, start that one a little higher. She'll come right across the plate for you. Game is almost two hours old. Ground ball. Be played by the shortstop, Lessig, and throws it across the diamond. Got him. Close play. Nice play again by Lessing right there. Made it close at first, but showed his arm. Gets the out. Two, two outs in the inning now. Here's Evan Harlemet, officially one for two today. Singled, scored a run back in the second, walked in the third. He is one for two today. Two outs here in the top of the seventh. Shows bunt and takes a strike. Gabe Hart, sophomore for Fort Laramie Redskins and Coach Jeff Sanders. Breaking ball is outside in the dirt, one and one. Started to go to the stretch and went, whoa, that guy's Nobody not over there on. anymore. Uh -huh. Ground ball. This will be hit to the third baseman. Scoop up by Hoing, and he throws it across the diamond, and we will go to the bottom of the seventh. Coldwater tacks on a run. It makes it 3-0, heading to the bottom of the seventh. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning from Fort Laramie. Our scoreboard has been presented by Reese Myron Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. And a little bit more daunting task now facing Fort Laramie. The Coldwater Cavaliers scored a run in the top of the seventh inning to make it 3-0. And they will send uh, Darren Eilerman to the plate. And back on the mound for inning number seven, Keegan Bruggeman. Yeah, Bruggeman. Looking to do what Grudich did last night for Fort Laramie, go the distance and pitch a shutout. 2-0. That's what you want your leadoff hitter to do to get himself on base here. Yep, work the pitcher in the seventh inning. Pitches a strike. 2-1. and one. The scoreboard says 1-2. and two. Did I miss? No, I'm with you. Okay. Thank you. We're either very, very often. Yeah. Right? Swinging strike. Yeah, it was. So it was a strikeout, Dave. Mm -hmm. My my book was wrong. I. So we get a swinging strike. There once again. What six out of seven innings? Get the leadoff hitter. Uh huh. Strikeout number ten. That's a recipe for success. And uh, Keegan Brueggemann, he's he's. Made that recipe work for him all night long. I don't know what he's cooking, but it's been real, real good. There's Christian McGee to hit. Christian walked back in inning number two. He was pinch hit for in the fourth. So this will be just his first official bat, bat of this game. Keegan Bruggeman back to the mound. Shows bunt. Did he go? He did. One and one. Going to turn the order over in just a moment to Maverick Grudich. The leadoff hitter and swings and misses with that pitch. It's one and two. Again, Brueggemann not messing around. It 
getting on that mound, throwing the baseball, and he's also bringing a lot of fastballs here late in the game, just saying, I'm up 3 nothing, nobody on. Here's the pitch, hit it. I challenge you. He got him swinging. And the throw out at first base, and they record the out. So back-to-back -back strikeouts. That is strikeout number 11 for him. Great execution there by A.J. Harlemert and Luke Sutoff at first base. Sutoff on the foul side of the bag to give his catcher a big target with the base runner coming down the line. Subtle things in the game of baseball. Little things, doing the little things exactly right. Oftentimes the difference between winning and losing. Ball's hit to the third baseman. Here's our throw across the diamond. Dug out over here by the first baseman, Luke Sutoff. And this one will come to an end on a ground out by Maverick Grudich. That will go 5-3 to record the out. And Dave, that's a 3-0 shutout for that young man. And he pitched extremely well today, did Keegan Bruggeman. He certainly did. Bruggeman with a 6-3 record last year. Gets things started on the right foot for Coldwater with the win on opening night for the Cavaliers. Just an outstanding pitching performance, and he got stronger as the game went along. It's a three-hitter, correct? Three, three hitter. hitter. Struck out 11, walked a couple of batters, hit a batter, had a wild pitch in there, but overall a, a very nice performance for him. Nine scores goes this way. For Coldwater, they scored three runs on five hits. They had a single error. They left nine people on base today. On the other side, for Fort Laramie, no runs, three hits, three errors. They left seven on. Is that correct, Dave? I'm doing some quick addition that is here while we put this together. Yes. The winning pitcher today will be Keegan Bruggeman. He goes all seven innings. The losing pitcher today will be Christian McGee. Fort Laramie, they will drop to 1-1 one and one on the season. They are still 1-0 and oh in Shelby County Athletic League. Coldwater's opening game today makes them a 1-0 victor, a 1-0 and oh on the season. We want to thank our scoreboard sponsor today. That would be Reese Meyering and Company CPAs. Dave, that one took a very quick uh, two hours and five minutes by my clock. It's a pretty quick baseball game on a 3-0 shutout night. I want to thank our people who worked here at the game today. That would be Megan Sherrick, Cassidy Driscoll, Mia Waddle, who did all the camera work and hooked us all up with all the equipment we needed done. And back at the station, Nick Frederick will edit this all together. Coldwater goes to 1-0 on the season. They will do so with a 3-0 victory over Fort Laramie. You've been watching High School Baseball on WOSN.